Hi there. This is Lawrence Simon, a technical writer on the documentation team at cPanel, the hosting platform of choice. It's all about the cloud these days, isn't it? Did you know that you can create a cPanel and WHM server instance in the cloud? In this video, I'll demonstrate how to spin up a cPanel and WHM server on Amazon EC2, the Elastic Compute Cloud at Amazon Web Services. In this video, we'll perform the following tasks. We'll log in to Amazon Web Services. We'll subscribe to the cPanel and WHM AMI, or Amazon Machine Instance. We'll configure the instance and launch it. We'll configure an Elastic IP address. We'll connect to the instance to set the password. Then we'll connect to WHM. Now, in our first video of this series, we created an Amazon Web Services account. We can use that account to log in to the Amazon Web Services website. Let's go ahead and log in to AWS. The AWS Management Console interface will appear, but we don't need this console for this procedure. We're, let's change to another browser tab. And let's visit the following website, go.cpanel.net slash cPanel AMI. The cPanel and WHM for Linux listing in the AWS Marketplace will appear. Read through this page to learn about pricing, support, and other important information. When you're ready, click Continue to subscribe. The subscribe to this software interface will appear. My screen isn't showing the Terms and Conditions option because I accepted them in an earlier session, but on your screen, read through the Terms and Conditions and then agree to them. Then click Continue to Configuration. The Configure This Software interface will appear. Under the Fulfillment option, we'll select the default option from the menu, 64-bit Amazon machine image. Then we'll select the preferred software version. We strongly encourage you to select the most recent version available in this menu. Don't worry if the newest version in this menu isn't the latest available from cPanel. After we initialize the instance, you can go ahead and update cPanel and WHM to the newest version. Now I'll select the data center region. Amazon's regional data centers are located around the world. So select one that's either near your location or near your customers. Click Continue to launch. The Launch This Software interface will appear. The Configuration Details section displays the information that you have already entered. Under the Choose Action menu, let's use the default option, Launch from Website. Then under the EC2 Instance Type, You'll see a list of various instances that you can launch this installation of cPanel and WHM. Each of these instances has different memory amounts, CPU cores, storage types, network performance ratings, and prices. You can look at those on the side of that table. I'll just go ahead and select this one for demonstration purposes, okay? By the way, if you're just looking to test cPanel and WHM, the T2 Micro instance is free. Now we'll select a VPC setting. That's a, an Amazon Virtual Private Cloud setting. We'll go with the option that the interface offers us, but you can create a new one if you need it. That option is for advanced administrators, so let's continue. Then we'll scroll down to the Subnet Settings menu. This is the network subnet on which you'll create the instance. We'll go with the option that the interface offers us, but you can use one from the menu or create a new one if you need it. Once again, that's for advanced administrators, so let's continue. Then we'll scroll down to the security group settings. Security groups act as a firewall to control traffic to these instances. We'll click Create New based on seller settings and a form will appear. We'll give the security group a name and a description. Then we can set firewall rules for the security group. Come on, say it with me. That's for advanced administrators, so I'll scroll down and click Save. The form will disappear. 
Let's go to the key pair settings section. This is where you can generate an SSH key pair for security purposes. I need to generate my own key, so I'll click create a new key pair in EC2 and a new interface will appear. Click create key pair and a pop-up window will appear that asks for the name of the new key. I'll name it demonstration and click create. Then tell your browser to download the new SSH key. I downloaded my SSH key into the downloads directory, but you can move it to another location if you wish. Let's return to the previous browser tab. Then refresh the key pair settings menu and select the new key name from the menu. Finally, we'll click launch to launch the instance. A new interface will appear with a success message. Congratulations, an instance has been successfully deployed. Now let's access it. Click the EC2 console link. The EC2 console interface will appear. It will list your instance and any other instances on the account. It'll take a while for the instance to be ready to use, so while we're waiting, let's give it a name. Move your pointer to that instance. Click that pencil button. Then we can give this instance a new name. Let's <laughs> see what I did there. I gave it a new Okay, enough with the jokes. Now we need to set up an elastic IP address for this instance. In the left sidebar, scroll down to the Network and Security section and click Elastic IPs. A new interface will appear. Then we'll click Allocate New Address. Another new interface will appear. We'll select VPC and then click Allocate. A success message will appear and we'll click Close. We return to the Elastic IPs interface. Select the Elastic IP that you just created. Then click Actions and select Associate Address. A new interface will appear. For Resource Type, we'll select Instance. In the Instance menu, we'll select the instance we just created. See that nice new name we gave it? Finally, for the private IP, we'll select the elastic IP address that we just created. Let's leave this reassociation checkbox unchecked. And then click Associate. A success message will appear. Finally, click Close. There, we've configured the elastic IP and associated it with our instance. Let's go to the left sidebar and go back to the Instances interface. The Instances details will appear at the bottom of this interface. I'll scroll down to the IPv4 public IP and copy it to my clipboard. Now we're ready to use that key pair we created to log into the server via SSH. I'm on a MacBook Pro, so I'll open a terminal session. Remember, I downloaded my SSH key into the Downloads directory. Use the chmod command to set the permissions on that key file to 0600. Okay, that's done. Then, we use the SSH command to connect to the server. I'm going to use the dash i flag to use that key file, that PEM file, and then specify the user and server CentOS, the at symbol, and then the IP address of the server. I'll accept the warning for the connection. And there, we're logged into the server. Let's go ahead and change the root password. Type sudo space and passwd and hit enter. Then enter a new password, confirm it. And there, you now have a new root password. Now that we have a root password, let's type su space and a dash, and then hit enter. And then enter the new root password. 
The server will respond with a message of the day that contains helpful links and a URL where you can log in to cPanel and WHM. Let's copy that URL into our browser and navigate there. Your browser may give you a few security warnings. This is because we're using a self-signed certificate right out of the box. Later on, you can set up a hostname certificate to secure your server and get rid of these warnings. A new interface will appear that asks you to agree to our software license. Go ahead and read it, and then click Agree. Another interface will appear that will ask you for your contact information and the name servers to use. I'll enter my email address as the contact information. Then for the name servers, I'll enter NS1 dot and the domain name that I will use for the server. For the secondary name server, NS2 dot and that domain name. After you click Finish, the WHM interface will appear. Every cPanel and WHM server that's new on a particular IP address comes with a 15-day trial license. You can contact cPanel if you wish to buy a license, or you can buy one directly from within the WHM interface. You might see some warnings at the top of your interface. If you see a warning about a new version of cPanel available, don't worry about it. As part of the installation process at Amazon, cPanel and WHM is updating itself as a background task. However, if you see a warning about requiring a reboot to apply software updates, that means that there is a new operating system kernel available. You can take care of that reboot after you get things set up in your server. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and change the host name on the server. In the left sidebar, search for hostname and click Change Hostname. The Change Hostname interface will appear. Let's enter a new hostname and then click Change. There, we've successfully changed the hostname of the server. Because we're on Amazon's cloud, we need to run a special command to preserve the hostname if we stop and start this instance. I'll put the command in the video's description and a link to our documentation where we list the command. And there, I've run it successfully. Your server is now ready for you to configure, just like any other cPanel and WHM server. I'll include links to the relevant documentation in the video description, okay? For more information about cPanel, the hosting platform of choice, visit cPanel.com or follow us on Twitter, at cPanel. What did you think of this video? Let us know in the comments. And for more helpful videos, subscribe to our cPanel TV channel. Thank you for watching, and enjoy.